Today we're at the School for Advanced Segmental Paving. We've moved from our previous job site to our year-round indoor arena in order to be in a more controlled environment and to better facilitate learning and education. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a perpendicular reference line on top of our base. The way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to take our center of pavement mark that we've put on the garage slab and we're going to use a method called the pyramid method. The way that's done is you simply measure out equal distances from this point in both directions. You can choose any number here as long as both measurements are the same. For our purposes, in this instance, we're going to use the number 10, 10 feet. Once you've measured out 10 feet, you're going to make a mark on the garage slab. Then we're going to go ahead and measure 10 feet in this direction. And we'll have two people, one on each point, holding the tape measure. The way we're going to go do this is we're going to start on the 12 inch mark just because we'll get a more accurate reading if we start with a predetermined point on the tape measure rather than the end of the tape measure. We want to use the inside of the tape measure and have our 12 inch mark directly over the edge of the curb. We'll have our other person at that point do the same thing. Now one person will take both tape measures and walk down the driveway until they cross over at the exact same measurement. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make a mark where the two points intersect. We're going to snap a chalk line on our base to create that perpendicular reference line that we were working toward. We'll take a chalk line, and it's very important when you're using a chalk line to make sure that it's completely full with chalk so that you get a heavy, easily seen chalk line on your base. So we'll take a square at this point and put it in place directly below our mark that we've made on the garage slab. We do this so that we can transfer this point down onto the base. Once we're satisfied with where the square is placed, we'll run our chalk line. And I'm tapping the chalk line right now to ensure that we have an even distribution of chalk on the line and we get a nice strong line. And now we've created our perpendicular reference line. We're going to transfer this mark, our perpendicular reference line, onto our street curb so that we have this mark here and we can snap this line again once our bedding sand is done in order to lay our pavers. I'll take a level and I'll measure plumb and transfer that mark. The perpendicular reference line was snapped down the middle of the project. The edge of the pavement is located 11 feet or 132 inches from the center perpendicular reference line. Now we need to create the edge restraint line. If we go ahead and we snap a line 11 feet from our perpendicular reference line, we're actually going to be inaccurate. This is because our edge restraint has a lip on it. This lip measures one and one quarter inches. The edge of our edge restraint is to sit on the snap chalk line that we put on our base. So what we're going to do when we snap the line for our edge restraint is we're going to snap it to correct distance and deduct this lip from our measurement so that our edge of pavement will be exactly where it needs to be at 11 feet. We start with 132 inches. To that, we add 12 inches for the 12 inch tape measure extension beyond the perpendicular reference line. This gives us 144 inches. Because the lip on the edge restraint is one and one quarter inch long, we will subtract one and one quarter inch from the measurement, giving us a total of 142 and three quarter inches. This distance is where the chalk line will be snapped. So again, when we're measuring out, we're gonna start with the 12 inch mark. We're doing this to avoid any error that might occur 
from movement on the end of our tape measure or when this lip here becomes bent. Visually, what we're looking for is we want to stay perpendicular to our center line with the tape measure. Now we want to do this twice. Again, starting at the 12 inch point. Visually checking to make sure we're perpendicular. And we'll go ahead and lock the tape measure. Okay, 142 and 3 quarters. The plan gives us two radius points that we will use to find the edge of pavement on the other side. We will stamp a line on the base that will serve as a visual reference for the layout of each radius. Hundred and forty two and three quarters. We're going to find our radius point as it was given to us in the plan. The first radius point near the garage apron has been predetermined. It is located 68 inches from the center reference line and 41 inches from the garage apron. The radius of this curve is 64 inches, putting the outside of the curve at 132 inches from the center reference line. The position of the second radius point is also placed 132 inches from the center reference line but the distance from the garage apron is determined by the intersection of the two curves. In this case, the distance is 127 inches. A spike will be put into the base where each radius point is. This will help with marking each radius. With 68 inches, we'll take our radius point and begin laying out our radiuses. Now we'll be installing our edge restraint on our chalk line that we snapped on the base earlier. Now we're going to use a 3 8 inch by 10 inch steel spike to secure the edging every other hole. We don't recommend that you use a spiral spike or a galvanized spike. It is important actually to have a certain amount of corrosion on the spike to help anchor the spike into your base. We also don't suggest any longer spikes such as a 12 inch spike. Anything below your base is not giving any more strength to the system at all. So a 10 inch spike is adequate in what is suggested. We'll take our edge restraint and we'll move it to the line so that the edge of our lip is just touching the chalk line. And we'll make sure that the edge restraint is tight up against our curb. It's very important that the edge restraint is tight to the curb so that any sand in the system is not allowed to escape outside and cause a failure in the corner. We'll go ahead and install our spikes every other hole. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and install the second edge restraint. And you can see what happens here. We're going to end up coming about 10 inches short of the next curb. Whereas you could do that, we don't recommend doing that because that will be a weak spot. So what we'll do to compensate for that is we'll bring the second piece of edging back a foot or so to allow a bigger piece at the end. With a plastic edge restraint, you can simply cut with a hacksaw. For cutting through plastic edge restraints, use a 32 teeth per inch hacksaw blade. And we'll bring it to the line again. And now at the end, we'll have a much larger, more stable piece to put up against the curb. Next, we'll join the two pieces of edge restraint together using a connector.
Then we'll continue putting in a spike every other hole. And finally, we'll place our last piece, again making sure that we're tight against the curb. We'll take our hacksaw, just make a mark for the cut. Take our connector. And place our spikes in. Now, you'll see that once our edge restraint hits the curb, if we were to just install it as such, we would have a large gap where any bedding sand would escape. This would ultimately cause a failure in this corner. What we need to do is we need to cut our edge restraint on an angle so that the backing fits tight against our curb. Now, we should get a nice, tight fit when our edge restraint goes against the curb. When we're using a flexible edge restraint, we're going to install a spike in every single hole. Now, the reason that we're pounding these spikes in only halfway is that once we put the entire edge restraint all the way down, we can step back and look at it, make sure that we're happy with the design and the flow of the curve. And at that point, if we are, we can pound them all the way down. If we have to make adjustments after that, we can easily pop the spikes and adjust the edge restraint. Once the edge restraint is initially placed, we can kind of take a look at it and we're looking for an, a smooth, even flow of the two radiuses. And by stepping back, when we look at this, I'm pretty happy with what we have so far. At that point, we can go ahead and pound the rest of the spikes all the way in. One of the reasons that we do pound the spikes only halfway in is for this example that we just found as we were pounding this in, you can see the two pieces of edging don't come tight together. This would almost certainly cause a failure in the system if we were to leave it this way. The reason why we have this gap here is because the back of this edging is not coming tight and needs to be cut back at an angle. So because we left these spikes halfway out, they're very easy now to come along and just pull. so that we can go ahead and cut that piece. Now we've just noticed that we need to make another slight adjustment. When we put our soldier course in, we see that the soldier course along the radius curve right here would basically start running in terms of a really small pie where the other soldier course ends. To get rid of that, what we're going to do is we're going to readjust our edge restraint here, flatten it out toward the bottom so that we get a full row of soldier course on this side and nice cuts going into it on this side.
And finally, our last piece of edge restraint. When dealing with an 80 millimeter paver, such as this permeable paver here, a typical rigid edge restraint is not going to be sufficient once the paver is on top of the bedding sand. You're not going to get the support from the back support that you need. In this case, you want to use an industrial edge restraint that's going to give you much more strength and support when holding in that paver. Now we're going to make our rigid edge restraint slightly flex. And you would use this in an application where, let's say you were at the bottom of a driveway and a driveway were to fan out. Instead of using a flexible edge restraint, you can still use a rigid edge restraint and slightly make it adhere to the curve of wherever you're building to. And then we'll decide on how far over we're going to make our bend. In this instance, let's say six inches. So Alan will measure over six inches and make a mark. And what we'll try to do now with each spike is make a gradual movement toward that mark until we meet it toward the end and we have a nice gradual even bend in our edging. 